Hi again, and we are starting uh, this little journey into history and origin of uh, the so-called yurts and gers, and we will be talking in this video about uh, origin and evolution, early stages and late stages of development, and different versions of the uh, different theories about the origin and evolution. And we will start with the one uh, that is, um, if you are into yurts, uh, you might run uh, into this quite often. This is a, uh, uh, a theory number one, or version number one, as I call it, of early stages of yurt origin and evolution. And basically it states that uh, modern yurts uh, and gears uh, stem from this early tent design that was uh, sort of tipi-like, uh, which was made out of uh, long poles put together uh, like this in a, in a form of a cone, conical shape. Uh, so they were put like this and they formed this cone frame, cone-shaped frame, that was later covered either by animal, animal skins or fur or, or tree bark or some other material that varied from region to, uh, to region, uh, as you can see on, on the image. Now, uh, it suggests that this uh, version, this theory suggests that later on, uh, this uh, this type of design was uh, improved, further improved by adding the wall section to it. In other words, it instead of being just a cone, it became a cone sitting on top of cylinder, and the cylinder was made of uh, also of wooden structure, which made uh, this type of dwelling much roomier. Uh, I will be talking about it later in a couple of minutes. Uh, then this design became uh, more and more advanced. Uh, the, the, the frame became sturdier. Uh, the, there was a, now they added a door opening section and etc. Maybe around this time uh, the felt was introduced. So instead of animal skins uh, and furs uh, uh, and hides the yurt the, this year the, the this year design maybe was already covered by felt we don't know for sure i'm just uh, trying to find the middle ground between all the theories and finally we arrived to a fairly modern looking yurt with the lattice with the collapsible lattice uh, uh, for the walls and uh door opening maybe a door even and uh, covered with felt uh, with pieces of felt so it was pretty much a modern yurt in many ways or or maybe proto proto yurt and talking about this uh, version still the yurt origin and evolution uh, were why we why I find this theory very very plausible and very logical is because various uh, nomadic groups not only in Eurasia but even in uh, North America came up with this design uh, independently because it's so uh, simple it's so basic and at the same time elegant and versatile it could be reproduced in pretty much any uh, in in almost any region of the earth and we're talking about uh, the so-called chum of siberia and tipi of north america and even though they are independently developed type of dwellings if you look at the pictures they're so incredibly and strikingly similar that uh, it kind of uh, suggests very similar mindset 
of the designers of the people who designed this type of dwelling and interestingly enough it is still used today this type of design not only am among uh, the peoples of Siberia and North America but even uh, in Central Asia but we will talk about it later uh, so speaking of the next uh, stage of development from the chum or tipi type of, uh, of, 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 of the tent we're moving to, uh, to the one with the added wall sections uh, wall height and we're talking about uh, yurt uh, or tent type similar to Siberian Yaranga and this is uh, a more advanced uh, version of tipi we might say and it was probably uh, the, 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 the stage immediate before the, uh, the, the invention of the proto-yurt design. Now, uh, speaking of architectural analysis of this, uh, of this important development, by adding this uh, wall section, the, the wall height, what we achieved in the past is that we went from the conic shape, just straight conic shape that looks like a triangular in the section, and we moved to a, a conic shape sitting on top of cylinder, cone sitting on top of cylinder. And by doing this, we increased the, uh, the interior of the dwelling significantly so now we get more more roof space we get more floor space the um, the walls uh, inside don't slope there is a there is first a straight section about the height of human and then and only after that section it starts sloping so we created a lot of um, we created a lot of space at the same time uh, the footprint either didn't increase or even got smaller, but we still get more room. We still get more uh, volume inside in terms of uh, cubic meters or, or cubic, cubic feet. Uh, this design, the, the Yaranga design, the proto design, it has more volume on the inside with the same footprint. So if we will, if we look on the right of this uh, uh, diagram, we can see that the traditional uh, conic or cone tent design has its own limitations. For example, if a person is standing or, or two persons represented by these red blocks are standing inside, uh, the distance between them uh, could only be this much uh, if they're standing full height without bending. And we can uh, improve this situation by uh, making the base, the footprint of the tent much wider. In other words, increasing the diameter of the footprint. This way we get more distance. But then we get this uh, sort of uh, unused, um, unused uh, space uh, represented by these red triangulars that is kind of awkward because yes you can sit there you can sleep there you can store your stuff in there but it's not as convenient uh, because you have to crawl or you have to sit down so it's kind of a waste of space in a way and also uh, we can't uh, do that mm, indefinitely because uh, this kind of design requires longer and longer poles to be made. Uh, if we're increasing the, the diameter of the base uh, and keeping the same height, it means we need mu now much longer poles. Uh, and they are just uh, harder to find, for example, in, in tundra or steppe or, or uh, anywhere in, in Siberia or steppes of Central Asia. 
So uh, moving to the uh, Yaranga type uh, design or proto type design, solved all these issues immediately by adding the wall section. We uh, not only uh, solved the, the 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 space program, uh, the space, the volume problem. Uh, we eliminated this unused uh, uh, shallow space at the perimeter. Uh, of the footprint but we also now can use much shorter poles for the cone for the conic part and this way uh, it's it's a major major improvement it got more complex that's a given uh, nothing can beat the the simplicity and elegancy of the just a regular charm or tp uh, type of tent but uh I think it created a much more comfortable interior uh, space uh, in so much that pretty much all nomads switched to this design uh, at some point or another. And this kind of covers the, the version two, uh, the version one, the theory one of the year origin. Now we're moving to the next one. And this one is uh, kind of different because uh, if in the first one we immediately assume that uh, the nomads started using the, the tipi or chum like tents, conic temp tents, this one uh, actually is rooted in other theory that uh, which I also uh, find very much plausible. Uh, and actually, this is the theory I, I go with personally, is that in the Bronze Age, uh, it was the settled people, after undergoing the uh, agricultural stage, who started uh, switching to semi-nomadic and nomadic lifestyle. In other words, uh, the ancestors of C Central Asian and Eurasian nomads, they were not a direct lineage from the early hunters and gatherers. Between them, there was a stage of agrarian development after the agrarian evolution. In other words, uh, people first went from hunter-gatherers to agrarian settled stage, and only after that they started switching to nomadic lifestyle so uh, nomadic uh, Eurasian nomadism is not equal to uh, and is not directly stemming from uh, ancient hunters and gatherers and it's kind of a very important thing thing to keep in mind when we're talking about early or origins of the nomadic civilization so in this case um, the proponents of this theory of this version tracing the origin of the earth to the early uh, uh, or late <coughs> bronze age dwellings of eurasia uh, they were made of they were interesting because um, they had this quite uh, advanced system uh, they were uh, they were either square or round shape. Uh, they made a hole, uh, either square or rectangular or round hole uh, in the earth. And it was deepened about one meter or three feet. Uh, it was dug out this deep. The floor was covered by uh, uh, either dry clay or, or sand or something. Then the entire peri perimeter of this hole was um, enforced by stone wall. Now this stone wall was much higher than the hole itself. So uh, uh, some part of it was standing above the ground level. Uh, so it kind of looked like, uh, like a pool, like a stone pool in a way and then inside this pool they built a wooden frame structure 
uh, that had wall sections and then this uh, sloping section, the roof section. And they were all tied together and then covered by thatch on the top. So um, this is this reconstruction is based on archaeological evidence. It was a, a very common type of structure in, in Central Asia, in, in Siberia, in Kazakhstan, Southern Russia. And uh, the proponents of this theory suggest that at some point, uh, perhaps uh, based on this exact design, uh, they just, what they did, they just uh, raised this uh, structure now above the ground. Uh, in other words, they no longer dug a hole in the ground, and, but they kept the same, uh, the same approach, the same system, and perhaps uh, round design became more popular for some reason. And then from there, because it's already kind of a, if you look at it, uh, it's a it's a proto yurt proto yurt design sitting inside the stone wall, and if we remove this stone wall, we get the early proto yurt design, sort of or 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 similar to Yaranga. And uh, so, according to this version, this is what uh, this is what the, the the origin of this design was of the of the proto Europe design was with the wall section and the sloping roof section and some sort of cover. So uh, going from this uh, very stationary uh, dwelling type to a more mobile or maybe semi permanent, maybe some parts of it were embedded in place and used as seasonal dwelling. In other words, uh, the people would come and use it for a certain uh, period of, of the year and then move to another location where they would have a similar structure. And then uh, eventually, maybe from there, it became fully mobile and fully portable. And that's how the proto yurt was born. Now, like I said, I find this uh, version also very, very um, plausible because it is uh, grounded in, in historical evidence, in archaeological evidence, and it matches the historical processes that were happening in, in particularly in, in our region, in Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, at the late Bronze Age and early Iron Age. So this theory also uh, very, very much uh, very solid. Now, in terms of uh, archaeological architectural analysis, uh, like I said, it's it's fairly simple. We went from a uh, design that's uh, sitting in the in the in the hole, sitting in this uh, sort of pool, and then we're just raising it up. Uh, so it now sitting. On the surface, not in the hole, and then it becomes mobile. So that's kind of a very, very simple, uh, straightforward analysis. And from there, further on, uh, it kind of this theory merges with the first one. So they both arrive at the design at the invention of proto yurt, and from there. It goes to uh, the modern yurt, but we'll talk about it <coughs> in a little while. Now, the third version, I actually I came up with it when I was preparing the materials for this video. So uh, th this is one is mine. I'm not suggesting that nobody uh, ever uh, came to this idea before me, but I never came across this theory. So as I was gathering materials, I found some material on the first version, uh, on the TP chum type. I found some uh, uh, supportive uh, material on the second type, 
uh, coming from the Bro Bronze Age permanent dwelling, but I never heard anyone saying that uh, Yurt or Gear could have evolved from the um, mobile nomadic house type. In other words, if we look at the early nomadic uh, archaeological evidence in Eurasia, we find these uh, wagons uh, uh, that, uh, as you can see on the left, this is from the uh, first millennia, millennium BC. This is Scythian or Saka type uh, carts with a, a with a uh, dwelling with a sh with a tent sitting on top of it. In other words, it's a cart, it's a wheeled transport, it's a pulled cart. Uh, uh, pulled by the oxen, most likely, and there is a uh, there is a frame covered with felt, probably or, or skins, animal skins or or, or or hides, and a family, a nomadic family, could live in it, and it was moved from place to place. So. Uh, Perhaps this was the the uh, the idea that uh, later it transformed into a more advanced design, a round design, and we're talking about Middle Ages. Uh, we find these uh, <clears throat> the depictions of this type of dwelling on medieval miniatures. It's a two-wheeled cart, and we can see a. Um, either early type of yurt or at least a proto yurt sitting on top of it and it's been pulled by a horse or a camel so uh, it was probably used by uh, uh, the Eurasian nomads as a as a, as an either semi-permanent or even permanent dwelling in other words it could be pulled from place to place and a family could just live in it you know you you park it on a uh, when you when you camp and then you pull it when you move so there is no there is no need to even leave it ever it could be used all year round so thinking about these two uh type of types of uh wheeled transport slash dwelling I thought that maybe uh, this is another version, another theory of the origin of the yurt and gear, because if you look at this design and then you just take the top part, the, the, the tent, and put it on the ground, you end up pretty much with a proto yurt, with a ready proto yurt design. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting direction, it's an interesting thought that never <laughs> crossed my mind before but I thought this is something I definitely would want to uh, study more and, and contemplate about more in the future because this theory also seems very plausible to me because it's also uh, grounded in, in evidence in archaeological historical evidence and it matches uh, everything that we know about the uh, nomadic lifestyle and its evolution from the Bronze Age to Iron Age to Middle Ages and etc. So here we are, uh, three versions of uh, how the early, early stages of, of your design were formed until we arrived to the proto yurt or early yurt design. And from there we kind of uh, it becomes very clear uh, as you can see on this image so we have this uh, uh, early year design or proto year design then we move to uh, very early year design fully mobile with with the lattice collapsible lattice and and dome and then from there uh, we move to a more advanced design that has this skylight piece, the, the wheel-like uh, wooden piece in the middle that holds the, uh, the, 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 the poles supporting the dome, the roof dome. 
with a door and uh, we're talking about uh, more or less gear design and then from gear uh, the next stage of evolution was the invention of the so-called yurt uh, the, the Turkic design that has uh, some significant features and it's more advanced than gear uh, from from architectural from engineering point of view but this is something that we will talk about uh, in the next video about the difference between the yurt and gear and how they uh, probably uh, came about so that's kind of uh, my take on the origin and evolution of the yurt um, I'm sure there could be other theories and we should be open-minded and um, you know see if it if all these theories match historical evidence archaeological evidence if they make sense if they're based on our knowledge of the nomadic civilization its culture economy and technology and etc so uh, wrapping this up and hoping to see you in my next video talking about different yurt and gear types. Thank you.